Aloha Kohala. It is 3 o'clock here at KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala. This is Isla Allgood here with... Mikkel Anna. And we're going to do Intuitive Talk Story. And there's a lot of things going on for, for us personally and also what's happening in the world. So we are going to speak intuitively about what we feel might be valuable and uh, also, if you have anything you want to help us to focus on, call us at 884-5657, 884-5657. If you have our cell phones, we both have our cell phones here, so you can send us a text uh, with a question or a comment. Yes, we yeah. would love to hear from you. We'd love to see what's alive for you and mm-hmm. how we can reflect together to create positive change and transformation in this June we are into we are summer. In June, yeah. It is summer. <laughs> so it's summertime and it's hot. <laughs> it is it's hot. all of a sudden hot. <laughs> yeah. Which <sighs> means we get to sweat it out, right? Mm. We get to be with what is and we get to embrace the heat, mm. so to speak, as many people I know are in the fire mm. of um, growth and learning. And um, I was actually out and about today, or and I ran into someone who um, who listens to our show, and they had I had asked them what would they like to hear about today, mm. and um, they had said that they were dealing with a lot of guilt, regret, um, these kind of emotions, and to maybe touch a little bit on, you know, what to do if you're dealing with some deeper emotions like that. And I also know a few people who are going through some, you know, a rage, anger, right? Yeah. People who are really unwinding. We, I mean, we have a lot of people right now. I mean, everyone is unwinding abuse or trauma on some level. Mm. If you're doing some sort of spiritual peeling away and looking at the self, you realize, well, we're all from a lineage of s- many people. And we carry a lot of wounding from not just ourselves, but from our ancestors, our ancestors as yeah. we've talked about in the past. So mm-hmm. even if you have an experienced trauma in this life, you may be processing some trauma through the lineage. Mm -hmm. And those that have experienced trauma in this life, well, then it's really fresh, right? And then you have clear images to work with. And we want to work with them. Mm -hmm. And one of the tools I I talked about, and I've talked about it before, but I thought I might touch on it again if you want to try this with yourself. Um, We've talked about wounding and where do these things come from? regret, you know, emotions, they come from a program that usually is ignited from a wound. Mm. And that wound, um, you know, of maybe your father yelled at you and then you felt like, oh no, I'm not good enough. We drop our power, our pearl on the floor in this memory room. So this memory room is kind of cool because you think of it, it's here right now. Like it's not something in the past that you can't get to. Mm -hmm. It's something you can access now. So you you would go in a meditative state into this memory room with your inner child. And so we've talked about a little bit of this too, developing a relationship with the inner child. I truly feel this is where all the work is because we're really dealing with our inner selves most of the time. That's what's happening. So if we create a relationship with this inner child, your inner self, then you and your inner child can go together to this memory room. And you can go to different memories. But when you get there, you want to freeze the memory. Often when we go back into a thought, it has a lot of energy, right? Yeah, sure. If it was traumatic. Right. If it's active and it's happening, it's, it's easy to get pulled into that trauma. So the freezing element allows you to just let look at it. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. You don't have to get pulled in. It's just Mm -hmm. a photo. And you're, it's still. And so you're sensing into your inner child in that moment. What am I feeling? What are you feeling? You can sense, okay, well, I feel, she feels scared. She feels alone. She feels maybe like she's not enough, right? So in that moment, you begin to give your inner child what it is they need. And you look at the character in the, in the freeze. It's the father, let's say, in this instance. And you look at him and you see, well, he himself is hurt and not feeling like he is enough. And he's feeling sad, which is why he's enacting this behavior. Mm -hmm. And that he's just a soul on a journey, as I am a soul on a journey. And so how he can't give me what I need. He can't do it. I have to give me what I need because he's also just looking for the same things. And so we see he's just a soul stuck in his own prison. And you begin to feel some compassion Mm -hmm. for that being. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. This is also your plight. And then we begin to forgive, right? I forgive you for you know not what you do. And we let go of that energy as we give what we really need to ourself, right? And then in that moment, you just kind of can intentionalize, where's my pearl? Where's my energy? That, you know, that power. And it might be right there in front of the character, right? It's floating in the air on the floor. You'll see it and you just bring it back to you. Like I see it on my belt, on my crown, in my heart, wherever you want it to go. And you're calling your own energy back to yourself. You receive that energy and you let the character, the movie, the story, the frame turn into purple light and just allowing it to kind of release like it's drifting far away from you, further and further and further away until it just is gone and you're releasing it in that energy of forgiveness, surrender, compassion as you collect your own energy. In collecting your own energy, now the wound doesn't have a battery. So you still might ignite that neural program when something happens in my life. Let's say, you know, your boss says, you know, you didn't put a cover sheet on your paper. You know, ah, geez, I'm never good enough. Mm -hmm. That might be the program igniting, but then you catch it right there and you go, wait, I am good enough. If you can catch it within 30 seconds, that's your shift time. 30 seconds and you're in, you're starting to run the program. You have to catch it right when you feel it. What? Right then, what? No, that's not true. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. Yes, 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 yes. Whatever. Sing a song, make a noise, clap, something to shake yourself. Basically like you're, whoa, whoa, I don't want to go down that road. I want to go down this one. Whoa, let's go this way. And you reprogram. If you can do that right in that moment, because now you're dealing with a neural just habit, right? That's what we've thought. You've gone down that road so many times in your mind. You've played the tape. Right there, you stop the tape and you shift that put in the new program and put it, maybe put your hands on your body like we've talked about before and bring in like okay yes I'm worthy I'm good enough I'm enough I did a good job and then you can look and realize oh my boss isn't my boss just is trying to help me I forgot the cover sheet they didn't think I wasn't enough or that it wasn't good they're just actually trying to help me out I'm getting offended and I'm being defensive because of this old pattern that was set in by a wound that I'm healed and now I am reprogramming my brain, my mind, to get in alignment with this healing by choosing a new pathway and doing it again and again and again and again. Wow. Well, uh, this morning we had, thank you for that, we had, uh, Holly had Carolyn Mandras here talking about breath and so many things that we talk about, she was talking about in a slightly different way mm -hmm. and you just said about reaction and respond versus reaction yes and that's absolutely. something i've really been um practicing i want to say i don't know that one perfects it but definitely once you're aware that you react to certain things or certain behaviors that happen outside then you you you're conscious and then you can make an make another choice and Breathing is definitely one of the ways I do it. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn talking about the value of focusing on your breath just was a reminder for me that yes, when, when I start to feel triggered, just notice it, breathe, don't react to whomever or whatever. And then, then after however long it takes, maybe it's 10 seconds, maybe it's a couple of minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, whatever. <laughs> then start to think, how do I want to respond to this now? Now I'm, now I'm calm, now I feel peace, now I'm not agitated, now I'm not blaming, now I'm in this space. How do I want to respond? So I think for those listening, that difference between responding and reacting, mm -hmm. that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's all of it, the whole thing. Yeah, and I think guilt, you brought up someone struggling with guilt. For me, guilt comes from reacting. Like if I react to people in a way that I'm not proud of myself, then I can feel guilty about that later. So then I can doubly, mm -hmm. double down on the misery, right? right? right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's looking at all these different ways that we can evolve and manage our, our energy and our thoughts and the tools we can use. And it's not all for one, you know, it's not a one size fits all. We each have to find our way. But as you're listening there, 
think about, well, what would work? For, would it work for me to, to stop and breathe? Or would it work for me to get up and move around? Like maybe both of those things, maybe something else. And, and you know, you must have things that trigger you too. What, what are some of the things that you... I can be so impatient. Many people who know me have experienced. I mean, if anyone in town is probably experienced. <laughs> I can be impatient, and I and I don't mean to be. Obviously, my intentions are in a good place, but I just am trying to get somewhere in my head. I'm already going somewhere, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to get to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the next thing because of this, and I'm I'm feel my mind moving really fast, and yeah. I can come across really snippy and really uh, short, mm-hmm. and it, you know I. I know it's something that the opposite I of what have you want to be. The right? opposite thing of what I want to yeah. be, and it's definitely been. I would say my big thing to work on mm. out there in the world is breathing and having patience, as you're saying, um, so important. And I've often been guilty of reacting in situations, which mm-hmm. is why I concentrate on it and talk about it because it's helping me too, right? right? It helps us all to remember to come from a place of responding versus reacting and that mm-hmm. I have, I'm driving, I'm in control of this vessel and mm-hmm. I get to make the choice. And we're all, we've all been quote unquote guilty of reacting versus oh, sure. responding. And we all have our different places. It's in that, like you said, once you understand where your place is, well, then we get to work with it. So. I can't get mad at myself and feel horrible because, boy, I did that and I can be impatient. I shoot. I shouldn't have said that. What I can do is try to reach out and apologize. I can do my best to make it right and I can work on it, right? I can do my best to work on that behavior and to be less reactive and more responsive Mm -hmm. in the future. And that's what I do do each day, try to work on those things Mm. with whatever is in front of you, right? Yeah, and you never know what that's going to be moment to moment. It, the phone call, something changes, somebody says something, and then there's that opportunity. And I think part of that too, part of that, this whole process for, for all of us is the forgiveness part mm-hmm. versus forgiving yourself. So if I did react and I came across cold and unfeeling and mean or nasty or whatever, first I, I, I admit it. Yeah. I admit it to me. I forgive me and and not just in words but really feeling it Mm -hmm. and then I think okay where can I go now how can I how can I kind of make this right how can I be Pono with this Mm -hmm. or this person or this situation and then there is some thinking involved in that but there's also allowing it to bubble up intuitively what what would really help this situation right now sometimes confronting it isn't going to make it if, if you've been in some kind of a rub, that, that might not be the way to fix it right now or make it better. It may be just focus on sending that person love where you reacted and then see what's next mm-hmm. because it's all energy. Right. We've talked, uh, we've shared before about uh, going out in the, at night, like under the sky and just kind of going through your day. That, mm. that same process where you're kind of going, oh gosh, I ran into so-and-so and I wasn't really that nice. Oh, I was being in a hurry. I was just thinking about, Quick. you know, getting yeah. home and painting or whatever, <laughs> you know, right? Whatever we're doing. Because we often just are in our head. Mm. And whatever we, you can, so you see it and say, okay, gosh, I'm really sorry to so-and-so in the ethers. And I'm sorry to myself for doing that. And mm. I forgive you and I forgive myself for doing that. And please forgive me for interacting with you that way. Mm-hmm. And and then kind of see where the energy, like you said, yeah. kind of allow that to feel into your spirit. Breathe as mm-hmm. you were speaking about. And, and Carolyn is masterful at the breath work and she's helped so many people get through so many traumas. She's mm-hmm. masterful at that work. Mm-hmm. And breath has, I mean, gosh, that is it. It's where it's all at, right? I and mean, it's if we right can here. Breathe, if we can just breathe. Consciously breathe. It takes us out of the thinking mode and focuses on the breath and, and bringing life into our body, bringing the oxygen. And yeah, it just feels very, very important. And my, my, one of my challenges is uh, I can be patient. Um, I can, uh, and maybe somebody out there can relate to this. Sometimes when I have a decision to make that's a hard decision, I'll choose me last. Mm. And just as I say that, I can feel the pain in that. I can feel my body saying, ooh, yeah. So I'm looking at how do I choose me 
and respect the other person. You know, to find that balance or the other, whatever the situation is, whether it's a person or, a, you know, somebody, some organization asked me to do something. And it's like, oh, well, they really need me. So I'm going to do that, even though it's going to cost me somehow mm -hmm. in my in my beingness. Um, so I'm learning to say no. Boundaries. Boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a that's a kind of been a thing for me. <laughs> And, they, and boundaries, I feel like, is one I'm pretty good at these days. Like, that's... Yeah, that, but well, I, that's how we're all different, That's why too. it's great, because then we reflect, and you go, yeah. okay. So, yeah, so boundaries <gasps> are a big one. And that's, I think, it's really thinking that you deserve. It's a deservingness, like, mm -hmm. that I deserve to my opinion or what I'm wanting is deserving. And I remember my feeling that way, too. But, I, but that's something I've definitely worked on. Mm -hmm. Boundaries, like having good boundaries. Good, no, healthy boundaries. Let's say no. I don't yes. have to do everything. And that's something I used to do. Do it all. And you can't do it all, right? It's no. depleting. So you have to make choices. It's not that you don't love all the choices. Right. But you just have to make choices that serve yourself. Because if we're not at our highest and best to give, then well, what's the point in then being there to right. give? So right, so if somebody asks something of, of us, say it's a, a organization asking us to do something for them, if, if w we enter that in a depleted place because we're not caring for ourselves in the way we need to by saying no, then we're really not serving them and maybe they could have found somebody else who could serve them. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, well, well, and that kind of gets to a, just the bottom line. If you stand in your truth, yeah. you really give everyone else the opportunity to stand in theirs. As we stand right. in the, there is only the highest good. Right. So if you're standing in your highest good, well, that's going to be in the highest good of everyone else, too. Mm -hmm. You know, if, and you think it on a simple level, like if it's the middle, I'm exhausted, I have three kids, I need to make dinner in four hours, it's in the highest good for, you know, my sister to take the kid to school and let me take a nap so I can be there to right. make dinner and do a really good job at that. Otherwise, yeah. your food's not going to be very <laughs> good. You know, so little things. And there's going to be some dark energy with the food. I mean, because you're going to be you're angry tired or tired. Or, yeah, yeah, so I'm going to be a better cook for you all. Help mm -hmm. me out. I'll help you out. You know, we mm -hmm. can help each other by allowing the energy to be fluid. We have not letting things be like, oh, what do we need in the moment and being flexible. Mm -hmm. Flexibility comes in, I think, a lot when we talk about making change and transforming. We have to become more flexible to allow ourselves to go, oh, well, maybe I, it's not, well, I do it this way. We get so used right. to, I do it like this. Right. And if we can go, well, maybe not, you know, I do it another way. It can happen another way. We have to be flexible to allow those mm. nuances to, to take place for us to create together in a more harmonious way. You know, it, something comes up for me around, uh, because I've struggled with this too, is people who think um, they have to do it this way for the, because that's the right thing to do. And uh, in a world where we're taught what's right and wrong and, you know, you, you kind of give of yourself more than you take for yourself. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who struggle with this. I just heard someone talking about it the other day at a party uh, that, well, I'm going to do that because it's the right thing to do. And I'm like, well, is that what you really feel? Is that what's in your heart? Is that good for you? It's like, well, it doesn't matter because it's good for them. And so I think some of us have that program. Uh, this is the right thing to do. It would be the right thing to do that. You know? mm -hmm. And maybe if we can shift some of that right and wrong language the heck out of there and look at truth, keep looking at truth. Wow, you brought up so many different things we could go down. And I know we tend to tangent out there. I've heard that feedback. <laughs> we go down many roads. I hope we don't lose you on all Stay these with different us. Stay pathways. With us. <laughs> There's just so many things to talk about uh -huh. and that are related, interrelated, right? Mm -hmm. So you talk about communication mm -hmm. and about being able to say what you want and, mm -hmm. and also about coming into truth mm -hmm. and now I've just lost what your last what was your last sentence the right and wrong okay right a little so stuck in right and wrong can we just go to truth rather than saying this is the right thing to do right labeling so yeah. we label things label. and we also keep them on this plane of duality uh, and we've talked about this before but yeah. if we're if there's a, only two options you're in duality 
Yeah. If you have to pick this or that, then we're in a dualistic perspective and honestly you'll never win. Yeah. You can't win. There's yeah. only two things. Yeah. You have to be in the power of three. And so for me these days, it's pretty simple. Everything's really showing you power two or the power of three. So unless the power of three is present, it, it's not really happening. So because you want to get out of duality, out of this right wrong, and we want to get into neutrality. So mm -hmm. now when we get into neutrality, we become the observer. So this is not to say there aren't, you know, things that are quote unquote uh, it's hard to even say the word, right? Well, let's say this. It, it, we, this comes back to like basic human values. If we are not harming anyone, mm -hmm. we're only working with our own energy, then, mm -hmm. then if we are of no harm to anyone, then in essence, you are in rightness. Mm -hmm. You're doing no harm. Mm -hmm. Do no harm is kind of like the, the, the one thing we could maybe all agree on is we're, I don't know, but... I, but that, but that could be subjective could because be subjective, because true. what you think is do no harm, I might say that's harmful. So right, so enough, that's a little right, tricky that is too. Subjective. Yeah. True. That, that would be really difficult. We have to have to have a baseline on that. Okay. But that gets into morals. See now you get down to morals, values, and yeah. many of which really honestly haven't been taught in the last thirty, fifty years thirty years. We've kind of shied away from the old school way of having values and morals really taught through our system and this is how we interact. You know, like the Ten oh, Commandments or like right, love, right. love your neighbor. Well and in school behave in this school, way. In school the golden rule. Way. Treat yeah. others as you would like to be treated. There's right. some things that we have as a society we've agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Right? Which, again, now the right and wrong comes probably out of a threat of society, which is itself a program. Society is a program. Right. What society tells us to be and what we think is, quote, unquote, right or wrong is part of a societal program. Something we've all agreed right. or people have agreed on. We've been fed. And now we think, well, that's how it goes. And, and then you bring that into family. You know, we each grew up in these different kinds of families and what was considered appropriate behavior or right behavior or no this is what you do you don't you don't speak out of turn you don't express your anger you you know this is this is how you behave you know we were taught those things from from very little either by someone telling us or modeling it right yeah and we have some basic like societal agreements we all make we're you know polite to one another when we go to a store you wait in line you there's some mm. understood things we all do we've agreed upon that we're mm -hmm. willing to do but in family and in your own life, going back to that flexibility, letting go, you know, you have to allow yourself to make different agreements. Maybe, you know, you know, the idea of a relationship is a great one because there's there's specific things people, a relationship's supposed to look like this. But like is a it, romantic partnership, you mean? Or right. any kind uh, of No, relationship. romantic partnership. Let's say like a marriage. Yeah. A marriage is supposed to be this. Well, mm. that is, we've, as we can see out in the world, is not the case. It can be many things. Right. You can decide to be, we're six months on, six months off. For us, we do every other month. For us, we do week here, <sighs> week there. For us, we're all the time, 24-7, whatever. Right. It could be anything you choose. So it comes back to coming to flexibility that mm. I have the choice to create agreements that create what I believe is right and wrong. Like what's right for me. Yeah. What, what work, well not even what's right, let's say what works for me. What works for me, what really you know infuses me, what inspires me, what really makes me feel alive. We wanna focus on what makes, we could use that word, what makes us Aliveness, feel alive. Yeah. Like what makes me feel alive? I wanna feel good. So if I'm feeling alive and good, then it's drawing me towards something that's quote unquote right. And, and that language, Mm -hmm. of right and wrong is creating. So now this gets into the power of your word. So yeah. I said, she said so many things, <laughs> the power of your word. So if you start to really pay attention to how you talk, you will see how much you are creating unconsciously. Mm -hmm. If you just are always all day, you know, ah, that darn hip, it's always hurting me, man. That yeah. one phrase yeah. you are creating, You've just created it. That darn hip. Yeah. It's always hurting. Well, me. how about my the or a lot that, of people that do arm, my headache. Whatever. My headache, my, my foot. My headache. It doesn't I matter what have, it is. It's and and that ownership of the painful thing. Mm -hmm. You know? My trauma, my headache, my whatever, it, it to me it, it perpetuates something that you, 
we don't want to perpetuate. We don't want to, to go through life saying, oh, well, I, I have migraines. I'm always going to have migraines. You know, my. Well, you're creating it. Bottom yeah. line, what you say matters. You're yeah. speaking a prayer. Yeah. You're intoning with your vibration. So instead, you might say, hey, my loving arm. I'm going to give you some love right now. I know you're feeling a little intense, but you're getting better. You're healing. I'm loving you. Thank yeah. you for working for me. I want you to move. I want you to groove. Touch I'm your breathing. Arm. I'm, I'm breathing, breathing healing into, into that. It. Yeah. I'm thanking it for healing each day. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, you're talking to it. So, you know, have many of you seen the Dr. Emoto work, um, which is the water, molecular water work, or even the simple plant one where they show put a word on a plant yeah. just put a word or a vibration or music and then have it hear something really negative someone yelling at it for yeah. instance that vibration they did that where they put them in the you know the glass things yep. and the the plant that's giving love, Getting love. is growing huge yeah. and the one that's been being yelled at is literally withering yeah and so you so just what does see that tell it's you energy yeah it's our energy and so how you're talking to yourself you're either creating the withered plant or you're helping yourself grow. Mm -hmm. So back to that helps us if we think, oh gosh, what am I speaking every day? And am I breathing? Mm -hmm. So if I can begin by taking deep breaths, then I end up speaking slower. This has mm -hmm. helped me a lot mm -hmm. because I'm fast. And I, and so your yeah. mouth doesn't go as fast <laughs> as your mind, does it? <laughs> no, la, la, la. and then it just comes out like, bleh, right? So if I breathe and slow it down and I can deliver what it is I want to say, mm -hmm. then I'm also going to be more mindful of the words I'm using. Mm -hmm. And this is a way to help train yourself to use more productive speech, more positive mm -hmm. words, realizing I'm creating every time I talk. So what do I want to create? All right, we're going to create a public service announcement and a promo as we take a short break. Stay tuned for more Intuitive Talk Story. Support our island community and have fun. The North Kohala Community Resource Center will hold its fourth annual golf tournament on Saturday, June 5th, at the legendary Mauna Kea Golf Course. This important fundraiser helps the center to support more than 80 community-driven projects. We are looking for players, sponsors, and prize donations. Visit northkohala.org or call 889-5523 to sign up or learn more. Women's Voices on KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala with your host Isla Allgood. I'm proud to say that I've been doing this show now for six years and I still find amazing songs and spoken words by female artists from right here in Kohala and around the world. Tune in to 96.1 FM or stream live at www.knkr.org. Welcome back. This is KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala. This is Isla Allgood and... Mikkel Anna. It is June 2nd. It's 3.29 p.m. And uh, I'm going to read a little something out of this book that I just bought. It's uh, Edgar Casey on the spiritual forces within you. This is kind of old school. He did... Sleep, he was the sleeping prophet. It goes back into, I don't even know how long ago, 50 years ago, longer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was. Anyway, there was this one uh, paragraph I wanted to read because it, it spoke to a lot of the things that we talk about. It was actually said by Dr. Bruce Lipton. He says, the energy in your body is reflecting the energy around you because the atoms in your body are not only giving off energy, they are absorbing energy. Every living organism communicates with these vibrations. Animals communicate with plants. 
They communicate with other animals. Shamans talk to plants with vibrations. Quantum physis physicists reveal that underneath apparent physical structure, there is nothing more than energy, that we are energy beings. Quantum physics says the invisible energy is 100 times more e efficient in conveying information than our material signals. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Well, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And we kind of touched on this and we talked about the 3D to 5D show mm -hmm. when we talked about the dimensional frequencies that really we're creating on a spiritual realm, a vibrational realm. And what we see here in the physical realm shows up last. Right. It's like the manifestation, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I've been talking to some people about the, the difference and about going into fifth dimensional living and and how there are certain things that won't affect us in the same way in the fifth dimension that are affecting people in the third dimension. So we can all be on this planet at the same time having very different experiences. We are right now. Right. Not that we could. We are. Yeah. <laughs> And, and sometimes trying to explain that to other people who are in a totally different space isn't necessarily possible because they are just vibrating a, 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 at a different level. It's like they, if their mind isn't open to that concept, then what's the point of trying to convince somebody of something? It's really just about me knowing what truth is for me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. There's nobody out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nobody out there. It really is always go back. It's the simple stuff. You go yeah. back, like your mind can go all over, and then you just go, right, but who are they anyway? Because there's nobody out there. Right. So why am I even thinking about that? They're all just reflections. They're just reflections of, parts of me. Of yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where that, what he just said, it's all just a reflection of yourself. And truly, that's all it is. You know, and we've talked about this. Mm. Isla and I have, like, for instance, some, we have... There's like a, a myriad of gifts. If you think of everything's one, right? Okay, God is all that is. Let's say you can think of like, like Isla's a thumb and I'm a, a pinky. Yeah. And you know, like and we're some, all a piece right, of, of God. Of the whole. Of the whole yes. God. And we're, you know, I reflect a little bit of this because I've got, you know, some of the pinky in the thumb. We've got some similar stuff that we do, <laughs> but we're a little different. Yeah. You know, but we, you know, we all have different reflections that we can see ourselves or experience like, oh, I get that. Oh, I totally know what you mean. You reflect and you can see your own understanding. And when something bothers you similarly, it's a, again a reflection. And this brings in that response react. Yeah. I can... If I can realize that what I'm really feeling is about myself, like, you know, if I can say, wow, she never listens. And yeah. I go, well, it's me who's now listening. <laughs> I'm the one who never listens. It's my fault <laughs> if I can do that, right? And yeah. then I go, oh, that's me. And I can mm -hmm. go, hmm, I'm going to take a breath and breathe in and just kind of forgive myself and right. decide that I'm going to choose to now listen or whatever it is you're seeing whatever you see in front of you that you don't like see where you might interact it might be something you do and then choose well gosh i'm not going to do that anymore mm -hmm. use the reflection it's teaching you and showing you i don't want to act like that oh boy that's me i can't i'm done with that program boy that doesn't sound that's not fun at all and so if you can see it make a joke with yourself and yeah. then choose to change it now we choose to move into responsiveness because I'm embracing and seeing what it is. I'm not defending myself from seeing it. Mm -hmm. So in my embracing, I change it. I do change it right then. I've started to change it because it's all energy. It's all and energy. just by me seeing it, I'm changing it. <gasps> yeah. that, you know how that moment you go, <gasps> those revelationary moments, you just change it all. Just right yeah. then, you just change the vibration because you saw it. Like the tree doesn't make a sound if it falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, right? The pink elephant in the room, call it out, and boy, it's not, it can't stand there anymore. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. You're not hiding from me. Yeah, and that, that brings in responsibility, and I think that's, uh, that's one of the things I've really learned as I've gotten older and looked at my behavior and my reactions to other people's behavior is it's all about me taking responsibility for me and, and not blaming anybody for anything. They're, they're on their voyage 
and uh, if I can stay out of blame and realize well, this is my responsibility, I need to work this out or figure this out or forgive or all the, all the processes that I might need to go through, then um, that's going to work better for me. And blame is a big one because, right. again, we, we don't want to do it. We don't want to go in there. We'd to re- blame re- somebody else? Well, it's easier. Oh, it's yeah. much easier to blame somebody else than it is to deal with yourself, right? It's their fault. They fixed it. Then it'd all be good. <laughs> right? That'd be easy. Yeah. Off my plate. No. Yeah. So, right, you're right. And, again, if we go back, so that's why I like these kind of simple, funny phrases, and I say them because they, they're phrases that help you kind of just go, chink because if you yeah. go there's nobody out there yeah well then all of that actually is goes it's gone because if no one's out there who is there for me to blame nobody right and the and the the thing that might be triggering me is something that can help me grow well it's a reflection it's as part we of the just reflection said, <laughs> because it's one thing and you're reflecting and being reflected within it and your vibration and your reality is reflected back to you Similarly, as you're changing, absorbing, and radiating energy with mm-hmm. your vibration. So as we change it, move it, it changes. And we change the dynamic. So here's a, here's a little story that's come to me this week as an imagery on kind of what we're talking, this respond, react. And kind of it's like you can think you're on this glass floor. Live in life good. When you're feeling good. You're up on the glass floor, you're dancing, you're like, I'm in my joy, my gratitude, life is good, I feel great, I just love you, love everything, <laughs> it's awesome, hi, doing great. Now, under that glass floor, all the snakes and the like s- slimy things, and they're all like, shoo, 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 and they're talking, and they're saying stuff all the time through your friend that you walked up to, through you know a neighbor, through a situation. They're just snakes, like all under there, and they're going, yeah, you really aren't good enough. Whatever your thing is, are you gonna let them talk to you like that? Who do they think they are? Well, you know what they do. Just whatever they're saying, they're saying it. If you're able to stand on that glass floor and go, oh, good one, guys. Oh, God, you guys are good. Just trying to trick me left and right. Mm. Trying to trick me. You're not going to get me. Love you. Bless you. Have fun in duality. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> if you can do that, you stay up on that glass floor in your life. They're just down there doing their thing. But the second you buy in, you're like, well, you know, you're right. What, who, the, who the heck do they think they are after all? That's right. Who do they think they are? I just fell through the glass floor. Boom. Mm-hmm. And now I'm in the realm of the snakes and they're mm-hmm. all looking at me in the deep. And they're like, hey, glad you came down. We yeah. were getting really hungry. Yeah. We're so glad you're here. I'm just going to plug in and just give you a whole bunch of angst so you can get more angst. Because mm. I want to be fed all that angst, frustration. Mm, I just eat it up. <laughs> it's my food. I eat it and it's yummy. Thank you for feeding me. So that's you, quite the image you've, you've it, created. It is yeah, that quite is an quite, image. So yeah. you can see you're, you offered this every day. You're on your mm. glass floor, on the glass floor. Do I want to react right mm. now and drop down into like my mm. the snakes, my frustration, mm. my depression, my angst, my mm. anger, my guilt, my fear, whatever? Mm. Or do I want to choose? I want to make the choice to walk in my love and my mm. grace and to realize everything's just trying to trick me because mm-hmm. really it's just all trying to trick me into not standing in my own divine love. It all wants me to knock off of there and fall down on the floor right. and fall into the snake pit. So that's what's going on all the time. And we choose. And we can even love the snakes. You have to love the snakes. Yeah. You actually have Uh, to love the snakes. You love the snakes and you love what they're about and you recognize that that that's not where I want to be. Good job. Nice, nice joke. Good job. That was creative. (laughs) You know? Wow. Creative one. You really got a good scenario going here. You almost got me on this one. That was a good one. That was a good one. I'm not biting though. So close. Love you. Love so you. close. <laughs> or maybe you fall in and then. Of course and you do. You will. And yeah. you have. Yep. And then you're like, okay, all right, there's a bigger picture here. I need to get out of the, the snake pit. No no offense to the snakes. They're all mm-hmm. lovely creatures. Yes, we don't have them here. So we but do actually have a Hawaiian snake. I know, yeah, I know. Beautiful. Not the big snake pit that you're talking about, no. though. But and when you d- and that's true, valid point. You got to get yourself out of the snake pit. How do you get out? Yeah. By a love that she just said, big picture. Yeah, big picture. 
great way to get there. Remember the big picture, your little scenario you're in, you're stuck in a little piece of your mind. Make it wider, make it wider, make it wider, make it wider. Keep going to what's really going on. What's really going on? Wait mm-hmm. a minute. What's really happening mm-hmm. here? And then go even wider of your blessings. I like to then bring in gratitude immediately because it shifts everything really fast. Yeah. Think if gratitude is, you know, way up in that high vibration, you drop to the slow end, you just went halfway there. But you know, you just mm-hmm. got quickly up by remembering how blessed you are. Because no matter where you are, no matter what we're dealing with, we have something that's going good. Absolutely. Something is good. Yeah, I got the fact a roof that you're over breathing. my head. Yeah. I'm, bre- I'm alive. I'm alive. I ate today. <laughs> Whatever it is. I took yeah. a hot shower today. That's often one of mine. Hot shower is unbelievable. Um, we're just, there's so much to be grateful for. But any way you can get yourself into gratitude and you can unplug. And I mean that literally, for those of you who see that stuff. I mean that literally. Unplug unplug from the information whatever is angsting you whatever is feeding you unplug from all of those things you can again come back to the breath which Mm -hmm. breathe exhale and release with your intention like i don't want to feel this way release it out of your body as you breathe in breathe in what you want and speak it out loud if you need to speak again the voice you're creating so this is where you use tools when you get stuck in the snake pit you have to use tools you have to breathe to remember the big picture speak positive affirmations mantras prayers for yourself of where you want to go and what you want to choose and tell yourself what's happening like i i am worthy sally did not just she was not getting on my case and thinking i'm not enough right now right right now actually what's happening is i'm getting feeling reactive because it reminds me of my father when he yelled at me I am good enough and I'm worthy. I do a really great job. Okay, and I'm so glad. I, I love working here and I, I love Sally. And thank you, Sally, for letting me know about my title page. Thank you. I know you're just being helpful. Mahalo. Right? Let's yeah. Go back. Yeah. That was the original example. The yeah, beginning. well, when you said big picture, too, the thing that came up for me, uh, that comes up for me sometimes, is the word trust. That there's one thing to say, well, there's a bigger picture, but the other thing for me is to trust that there's a big, even if I can't see the bigger picture, I, 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 I'm just in my little, dark little place in that moment to keep telling myself, trust there's a bigger picture, you know there's a bigger picture, and just trust and let go and give it, give it the opportunity to show itself. And the only way I can do that is by getting out of the oh poor me oh this isn't working getting that's how i have to get out of the snake pit yes is to keep say keep trusting that there is a bigger picture absolutely (laughs) so you bring up for me what is the basis of all things is my trust and faith in infinite divine creator for me that is the whole picture it is i have a relationship to source energy and you can i you could say all sorts of things but what i would say is back to vibration yeah god allah abba ya the creator ra, but do you hear what i'm saying yeah it's the sound of the heart mm-hmm. the sound of love it's the vibration of love whatever name you speak i it is all if it is only one thing then it is only one thing and why do we fight one another about what we call it i'm not real sure when it is only one thing and and the one thing is all, you know, within all of us. And to me, that is what motivates everything in my life mm-hmm. because we are spirits having <clears throat> a physical experience first and foremost. And so, if we, again, if we can remember that as the foundation of our life, then everything does miraculously change because miracles are actually just energy management it's being aware of what <laughs> like you're that. doing energy management equals miracles <laughs> yeah because really it's just believing opening the gap widening the perspective trusting having faith moving into a more positive a more a frequency that more possibility right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely before you were talking about unplugging and we've talked about this before you talked about cutting cords and unplugging and one of the things I've been looking at is uh, when I think about that unplugging from situations is to, or people, is 
with the intention of sending the energy back to them so that they have all of their energy and I can have all of my energy. Now we're all connected anyway, but in, in being all I'm here to be, I can't do that if I, if I have all of these little pieces of me off with other people or they're, they're, they're plugged into me. Correct. So I'm just going to kind of fine tune that a little Please. for, for word and, and clarity is we don't, because we can also get a little sloppy, like I'm going to, you know, oh, I was with Isla and I throw her back some energy. I might have a little energy of mine on it and I just threw it back at her and now she's got a little bit of my energy <laughs> on her now too. That might be get a little sloppy. Yeah. So the yeah. easiest way is I'm not, but again, back to divine source. Well, divine source knows all. I don't have to do anything. I just have to ask. Yeah. So for me, I just ask, you know, God of my heart, however you like to pray, you know, divine source energy, but I, I pray. So, and for me, it's, you know, I ask that you cut all cords to all sentient beings and connect them to the God of their heart as I am connected to the God of mine. Mm. I'm going to say it one more time in case you yeah, actually yeah. want to write it down because it's, it is good to write down. I asked, I asked to disconnect all cords to all sentient beings that they be connected to the God of their heart as I am connected to the God of mine. And so it is. You can use your breath again. And you're just intentionalizing that any cords, energies that were, because we don't need to cord anyone. We want to be connected to God, to our source. Right. And then connecting, meaning sharing as whole beings connected to source energy. You're a whole being connected to source. And then we can communicate and share. But if I'm not connected and I'm connecting into you, now I'm trying to get something from that being. And maybe I'm trying to get my need met. Maybe because mm -hmm. I am dealing with the wound and I go out in the world, I'm not connected up to my source. I'm, I'm feeling angst. And then that thing with Sally happens, right? Because I'm not feeling good enough. Now I'm trying to, I'd really like Sally to meet my need to of make feeling me good feel enough. To make me feel better about myself. To make me feel good yeah. enough, but she's not helping because I'm trying to get something. Yeah. I'm not just connecting to source and filling myself up. So the more we fill ourselves up, disconnect from people, places, things, situations, and connect just to our divine source energy, now we have infinite guidance because there's infinite wisdom, infinite love everywhere all around us flowing through the trees the flowers the birds the air the ocean your being your body your cells it's everywhere for us to breathe in and connect into and be part of and be filling ourselves up so we're not courting one another and trying to get our needs met in some other way and that brings up for me about I'm someone who rarely asks for help for anything. Like, oh, I got it. You know, maybe I've been raised that way. I don't know. I, I can do it all by myself. And there is some kind of a dance for me about doing what you're saying, that I, I do all that. I work with spirit. And, but there's also times that I might need to ask for help, that I might need to ask for somebody's... Uh, perspective on something these are so two let's separate things yeah yeah well that's why i'm bringing it up because i knew you'd have an answer for that <laughs> <laughs> well i'd say one yeah. is courting which is courting energetically is a it's when we're using our energy and we're actually courting into each other you know like what's he doing you might thinking about like a we people do it like a lot manipulative? in relationship no it's just that you're you don't need to be tapped into someone else's energy to get to god Let's say I had a really great experience with but somebody. But maybe it's to control. I mean, people do that to control. It can be they? all sorts. Of, it can yeah. be many things. It can be it can be naive and, and not controlling. It can yeah. be all sorts of things. Point is, no cords. That's the point. It yeah. doesn't matter what they're from, why, or anything. Yeah. Thing is, I'm connected to the God source energy. You're connected to God source energy. And we allow our connection to be with that. And now we share. And it doesn't mean I don't ask you for help. I can ask you for help. Hey, Isla, I need help. Come on over. But now I don't have to cord your energy and really get into your energy for you to help me. You yeah. can you can help me and I yeah. can help you and we can right. reflect and talk. And we don't need to get all into each other's energy. I don't need to be thinking, you know, taking, now I'm taking things personal that Isla's saying, yeah. now I'm getting into that. You know, that's something different. It's energetics. Yeah. So asking for help is nothing to do with that. So you can just stay, stay clean in your energy. And then of course we all need help. 
let's we and act, we all want to interact with and one we another. want to help one yeah. another and our our nature i think is to help one another and the mm-hmm. more we ask and I'll put that out the more other people will you know we can help one another mm-hmm. helping each other is a good thing and mm-hmm. especially if you've run a program of i have to do it on my own yeah. then you want to encourage yourself yes i can ask for help mm-hmm. and i'll say to you right now isla if you need help with something you call me <laughs> i will come help you <laughs> thank you <Michelle>. yes <laughs> yeah and and knowing you know knowing what's true for each of us you know what's true for me what's true for you what's true for the person listening people listening that's what's most important is to know what's true for you Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that you can ask for help and take care of manage your own energy yeah, we're, we're all different. Some of us are rolling from victims. Some of us are rolling from the oppressors. Some of us are the, I'm not good enough. Some of us are interdependent. Some of us are too dependent. You know, we, yeah, it's whatever. depending on the day, too. Well, you know, you pretty much have kind of some characteristic programs mm-hmm. that are running. And, you know, that's what you want to figure out so that you can go, no, this is what I'm working with. This mm-hmm. is where I tend to go. I mean, that's what even astrology and all those things are. They're maps of what you're so-called tendencies would be right right? so you're learning about what your tendency you're just looking at what is so that you can change it Mm -hmm. you're like it's like if you're painting a picture you don't do it blindfolded you look at what you got you take a look okay well this needs to change a little bit I like this a little more over here so you're always tweaking it right we're always tweaking ourselves we never perfect it in this life I well, I would say maybe, you're also maybe. perfect at the same time, though. Yeah, you're yeah. already perfect. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. You're <laughs> fabulous and perfect already. Yeah, you're only peeling away things that don't serve you. Is how I see it. You're already mm. perfect and dynamic. It's the transparent onion. My quote I've read up to you before, but are we nothing but a transparent onion peeling away the layers to reveal the brilliancy of that which rests within? You you, you need to say that one again. That was. Okay. That was, I like that. That's very glowy for me. Are we nothing but a transparent onion peeling away the layers to reveal the brilliancy of that which rests within? I wrote that when I was 20. Beautiful. Yeah. And we are each, you know, that brilliant light and love that we get from the divine and... It's important for us to remember that. You've just been covered with stuff. Yeah. It's more like covered with like, oh, here, there's a little trauma for you. Here, here's yeah. a little, you're not good enough. Here's yeah. a little, you're, it's just like m- stuff that's been on Muck. us. Muck. Muck. You're, you're, you know, and I've used this example, but those of us who live in Hawaii, think of any tree and see like a monstera banyan or something growing on the tree and you see, you've seen a tree get yeah. taken by the vines. Yeah, like strangled. Strangled. It. So that's like all that I'm not good enough and all that programming. The tree mm. is perfect already. It's just got all this stuff sucking the life out of it and it's giving its power away to the vines. And so the vines are sucking it up and they're saying, yeah, this is how it's going to be. That's what your programs are doing. Those programs are sucking the life and you just have to rip them off and go, no, I am good enough. Not going to do that anymore. No, I'm not a victim. I am worthy. Not going to do that anymore. Yes, I choose kindness and compassion. Pull that one off because you are perfect already. Mm -hmm. A perfect divine child of God, infinite creator tree, the tree of life. You are the tree. Everything is the tree and we grow and water it and we bear good fruit. You shall know a tree by the fruit it bears. Nice. Well, as you're talking about the trees, I'm thinking about the roots underneath and how they're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. And that is us. We're all interconnected. We're interconnected with the trees and the everything. The people and the earth and the sky and the universe and the and the space between the atoms and we're, it's all connected and it's all energy. And if we can remember, if you can remember that on a mm. daily basis, the next time something flows through your world, mm. remember it's a reflection. So how can I learn from this reflection? How can I become curious and move into a response and n- not choose reaction but choose responsiveness? How can I choose to embrace and learn from this moment so I can rise and dance around on my glass floor, give thanks within <laughs> myself, and meet each moment from that place? Sounds pretty special. 
here we are, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. Might as well. I mean, you know, we got, you got time all day long to do all these things, to, to yeah. just play in yourself and to see what is and to be curious. Be and curious. Expansive. I think that's the biggest thing that I see really helps us in our relationships with one another and within ourselves is to get curious. Like if there's something that's, that's causing a ruckus and, and you're not liking what you're seeing or feeling, get curious, like what's at the root of that and what can I do to make it, not necessarily just go away, but make it better, make it, raise the vibration of it. Well, and again, back to letting go. A lot of and things. And maybe I have to just let go. Most maybe things there's are no, really letting go. Maybe there's versus nothing I can do. Yeah. Most of the time, it's just let go. Well, we have this Surrender. fix it thing too. You yeah, know, some you of us. Oh, you know what? Oh, that was a good. I actually got a pretty good uh, download on that for myself. And boy, I can't fix anything. I've just realized, you know, I can only heal myself. I can't fix anything else. And yeah. boy, it feels good. And I can be a reflection and mm-hmm. I can be present for those who seek me, my energy out, right? Mm-hmm. I can be present with those who are vibrating listen. in my field yeah. and I can listen mm-hmm. and be with those that are there. And I, I'm not, we don't have, there's nothing you have to go do. Right. You, you get to just, you get to be, be. The, back to that. Really all that's really asked and, and what I feel in my spirit is, to activate that divine love. Like let's stand on the glass floor. If we all can just stand on the glass floor and be cool there, how great would that be? Like, is there much, is there anything else to do? You know, if we're all standing on the glass floor in our joy, our love, our, and you know, we're just like hanging there. That's it. Like in that, in order to do that, we have to do all these other things we've talked about, which is peel away the layers, recognize the things that don't serve us so that we're not being reactive and buying into this great deception mm-hmm. and and realize that our true nature is perfect. Our true nature is joyful, mm-hmm. happy, Absolutely. alive. Our true nature, look at the tree. Its true nature is to grow and be, to be alive, a to be a tree <laughs> and to bear good fruit. Right. It's true nature. What messes that up is that the circumstances around it, the vines, the parasites, the things, right. how it's being taken care of, Who's, if is it getting watered? Is it getting fed? That's mm-hmm. what determines what happens to the tree, which is you. you are already got everything you need. You just mm-hmm. need to water it, nurture it, care for it, grow. Talk sweet to the tree. Breathe. Let the wind flow through the yeah. branches. Yeah. Give it what it needs. You are the tree. Let yourself grow and rise. Let your limbs swing like <laughs> the wind so free. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's leave people. It's, we just have two minutes left. Uh, one of the things that, I, that I heard today, uh, and that is just so true is that when you, we all have this tool of breathing and that if we can focus ourselves on our breath and there's lots of different things you can look up about how to breathe and what breath is good for this and that and the other thing, but just focusing on your breath, it helps cultivate your your own intuition. So you're hearing Mikkel and I talk about all these different things today and your mind might be spinning or you may resonate with it or you may not. Go into your own breath, feel your own intuition and know your own truth. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to leave you also with in response and reaction, think of that trigger moment, that one moment where you, what? That's you've got 30 seconds to catch yourself and choose a different decision. So that 30 seconds is where you want to either take your breath, make a noise, lift your arms, do something, find something that helps you shift the energy so you can move into responding, breathing, and transforming your life on a daily basis as we move into harmony and grace and stand together playing and dancing on the dance floor, on the glass dance floor. Okay.